Hi everyone, Moses the Pharma Coach checking in. Welcome back to my channel. Today's a continuation of my COVID-19 series. In my next videos, including this one, I will address some topics that will help promote some positivity and some hope amid this COVID-19 predicament. Yes, there is light at the end of the tunnel. I will tell you about the most promising studies and clinical trials that are investigating treatments for this novel coronavirus disease. By treatment, I mean preventive treatments, such as vaccine, as well as symptom relief treatments. In other words, treatment that might end up resolving COVID-19 symptoms. Let's start with the basics. A clinical trial is a research study that assign a group of people to one or many health-related treatments. For example, it could be a medication treatment, some psychotherapy, or a medical procedure. The goal is to evaluate the health outcome of these treatments on people. There are four stages to clinical trials. These stages are called phases. Phase one clinical trials test a new treatment in a small group of people to evaluate safety only. This phase helps to determine a safe dosage range and to identify side effects. Phase two clinical trials test a new treatment in a larger group of people to determine its effectiveness and to further evaluate its safety. Phase three clinical trial investigate the effectiveness of the new treatment in an even larger group of people. We're talking here about several hundred to several thousands. In this phase, we compare the new treatment to one or many other treatments. They can be existing treatments on the market or other new treatments, and the monitoring of side effects continues. In phase four, the new treatment has been approved and is now on the market. However, studies will continue to monitor the effectiveness and the safety of the treatment in the general population. Now you have all the tools to understand the specific clinical trials related to COVID-19 that we'll talk about in this video. In this video, the clinical trials that we're going to look into target some drugs that you must have heard a lot in the news during these past weeks. And I think it's going to be very exciting. I think it could be a game changer, and maybe not. And maybe not, but I think it could be, based on what I see, it could be a game changer. These two drugs are called hydroxychloroquine, also referred to as plaquenil, and chloroquine. Calling them game changers is a little bit too early considering the limited research. Luckily, there are some clinical trials going on right now that will eventually tell us if they're really game changers. Hydroxychloroquine is not a new drug at all. It's been on the market for medical use for over 60 years. It's regularly used in some autoimmune conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis and lupus and other conditions like malaria. It also has another drug cousin named chloroquine. Chloroquine has been on the market for several decades. It's primarily used to treat and prevent malaria. Why hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine have become so interesting for COVID-19? In laboratory experiments, both chloroquine and hydroxychloroquine have been reported to neutralize SARS-CoV-2, which is the virus that causes the disease COVID-19. The way we neutralize the virus is still unknown. One of the suspected ways is that these agents change the pH of the virus membrane and that pH change will prevent the virus from binding to your cells and entering them. One of the first clinical trials that tested hydroxychloroquine as a treatment for COVID-19 came from France. Back in March 2020, a French doctor named Dr. Dizier Raoult released a letter on a preliminary trial of 36 hospitalized COVID-19 patients. There were two groups of patients, a group of 20 patients receiving hydroxychloroquine and a group of 16 patients not receiving hydroxychloroquine. The last group, we call it the control group. Within the group receiving hydroxychloroquine, six of these patients received a combination of hydroxychloroquine and an antibiotic called azithromycin. 
For the people receiving hydroxychloroquine, they observed a significant reduction of the amount of virus present on the nasal pharyngeal swab that we use for testing. After six days of treatment, 70% of the group receiving hydroxychloroquine tested negative for the virus, as opposed to 12% in the control group. However, all six patients who received the combinations of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin tested negative after six days. Why some patients were given an antibiotic when we know that antibiotics treat bacterial infections, not viral infections? We know that COVID-19 is a viral infection. Therefore, azithromycin was not given to specifically treat COVID-19. In some cases, viral infections such as COVID-19 and even the flu can open the door for bacterial infections to take place. We call that a SIR infection, which is a secondary infection. A SIR infection may sometimes explain why some people are more critically affected by such a virus. The number of people in this trial is definitely not enough to make hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin standard treatments for COVID-19. Furthermore, this research study was not randomized, which means that the three group, the people who receive hydroxychloroquine, the second is the subgroup of the people who received a combination of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin, the last one is the group that didn't receive either, the control group. These groups didn't necessarily consist of patients with similar characteristics. A study that is not randomized is a big bias in the interpretations of final results because many other factors besides the treatments that were given could have played a role in the final results. For example, one group could have had more older and sicker patients than another group. However, as of April 9, 2020, Dr. Ryle's team claimed to have treated over a thousand patients at their hospital in Marcel with hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin. 90% of these patients were reportedly cured within 10 days of treatments, and they also had a low mortality rate of 0.5%. Only 5 people have died so far. Although these numbers are pretty impressive, a significant bias that we need to consider is that we don't know how sick the people were initially. We'll continue to keep an eye on the situation. Because of these preliminary promising results, more research is being done right now, on a bigger scale. Now let's start with Brazil. There's a clinical trial happening in Brazil that's looking to answer if the association of hydroxychloroquine and azithromycin is more effective than hydroxychloroquine alone. They're looking to enroll 440 COVID-19 patients with severe difficulty breathing who require oxygen or ventilation. Also, for the moment in Europe, there's an ongoing phase 3 clinical study called Discovery. This trial was launched in March 22, 2020. It will involve around 3,000 hospitalized patients with severe COVID-19 symptoms, including 800 patients from France. The goal with this trial is to evaluate and compare the efficacy and safety of five different experimental COVID-19 treatments, including hydroxychloroquine but this time it won't be combined to azithromycin. If you want to learn more about the four other treatments, go in the description box below and click on the link for my other YouTube video. In Canada and in the US, these drugs do not have an official use for COVID-19. They've been approved only for clinical trials. However, Last March, in the U.S., the FDA issued an emergency use authorization to allow the use of these drugs for hospitalized COVID-19 patients who are not eligible for clinical trials and for which these drugs are safe. By safe, I mean that they're compatible with their other conditions and medications. For a few people, these agents can be harmful for their heart and even for their eyes. The risks have to be considered before use and monitored during use. Currently, there's a phase four clinical trial being held in the US that will assess the efficacy of hydroxychloroquine in reducing the severity of symptoms in patients with COVID-19. Oh, quick question for you guys. 
Why do you think this trial is a phase four, considering that hydroxychloroquine has not yet been approved for COVID-19? Yes, you guessed right. It's most likely because of the FDA emergency use authorization. Up to 1,250 people are said to be enrolled. However, in this study, the people enrolled are not hospitalized COVID-19 patients. It targets COVID-19 patients over 45 years old who have not been hospitalized. Therefore, they will most likely have mild to moderate COVID-19 symptoms. So far, reports and studies have mainly focused on the use of hydroxychloroquine in hospitalized patients. Now it's nice to have a study will focus on less severe cases. As for Canada, particularly in the province of Quebec where I live, the supply of hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine is limited in the midst of this crisis. There are strict regulations about the use of these two drugs because we want to avoid a shortage of them. A shortage could be disastrous, especially for the people who need them for severe conditions. Quebec pharmacists now have the temporary obligation to stop treatments of hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine of patients with certain conditions. Okay, you might say that abruptly stopping a treatment like that can be harmful. However, for most hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine users, suspending treatment temporarily is not harmful because these drugs remain in their bloodstream for a long time. As for China, we have one completed hydroxychloroquine trial in China. The goal was to evaluate the efficacy and safety of hydroxychloroquine in the treatment of pneumonia caused by COVID-19. The study hasn't shown a clear difference in effectiveness between the patients taking hydroxychloroquine and the ones who did not receive this treatment. Unfortunately, this trial is not very reliable because it consisted of a small group of 30 patients. That doesn't really reveal anything, right? We must obviously wait for the results of larger trials that are being conducted in China. Yes, what about Italy? For the moment, there is no published Italian data on the use of hydroxychloroquine or chloroquine. Even though Italian recommendations indicate the use of hydroxychloroquine for COVID-19. Currently, there are many other clinical trials involving hydroxychloroquine that address it from different angles. There are two clinical trials looking to evaluate the efficacy of hydroxychloroquine to prevent COVID-19 among healthcare workers. There is a phase 3 trial in Spain with over 4,000 participants. There is a smaller one that is a phase 2 trial with 360 participants that will take place in the U.S. A phase 3 clinical trial for which Canada and the U.S. plan on collaborating together is currently recruiting participants to determine if hydroxychloroquine is effective to first prevent the development of COVID-19 after a person got exposed to the virus, and second, to see if hydroxychloroquine can prevent the progression of COVID-19 symptoms after a person has just gotten infected. Earlier, I mentioned another drug called chloroquine, which is the older cousin of hydroxychloroquine. I haven't talked much about it because there are not that many clinical trials focusing on it. In China, the use of chloroquine is included in the treatment guidelines from China's National Health Commission. Before hydroxychloroquine, the Chinese have already looked into the effectiveness of chloroquine for COVID-19. According to a Chinese report, chloroquine has reportedly been associated with lessening COVID-19 complications and with a shorter duration of symptoms. However, the data supporting these claims has not been published. There is one that's supposed to take place in Israel involving patients with mild COVID-19 symptoms. There's one in Vietnam targeting hospitalized COVID-19 patients. 
There is a phase 2 trial taking place in Brazil. They are currently recruiting patients to evaluate the efficacy of chloroquine to treat hospitalized patients with severe COVID-19 symptoms. Currently, there is approximately over 20 clinical trials on hydroxychloroquine and around 10 clinical trials on chloroquine. Why is there such a big difference? At first, we started treating COVID-19 patients with chloroquine because at the time we only had data from China on chloroquine and not on hydroxychloroquine, which is why it's chloroquine that is in the Chinese guidelines. Once we got data from France on hydroxychloroquine, hydroxychloroquine has been preferred because it has been deemed in the past less toxic than chloroquine, especially when it comes to ocular toxicity. As far as the trials related to hydroxychloroquine, I think it would be so interesting if we would start studies targeting people who take hydroxychloroquine for chronic conditions such as rheumatoid arthritis or lupus and evaluate their risk of contracting COVID-19. Hmm. Oof. That was a lot of information, right? I hope you guys understand more what's going on right now with hydroxychloroquine and chloroquine. If you want a written summary of all this information, click on my blog article link in the description box below. In my blog, you'll also find all of my references, including the links to the clinical trials that I mentioned in this video. Let's keep in mind that there are other treatments under investigation. If you want to learn more about them, click here. And if you want a good laugh, check out my video I did on panic buying. And remember, you stay safe and keep getting your life refilled.